Thanks, Mary. Hello, everyone. I hope you're having a great time at the conference. Um, my name is Haya. I came to New York University back in 2010. Uh, I can't believe it's almost been a decade since I started off my master's degree. Um, and I came here to study documentary journalism. And one of the reasons I was always interested in journalism was always because um, I was interested in learning about the nuances of any issue or any story. And um, I wanted to always explore the multiple layers that there are to a story or to a narrative or to a community or to a country. Um, and obviously, being from Pakistan, I mean, you come from a place where um, uh, the media uh, is laden with stereotypes about certain kind of imagery, about certain visual cues, and then you cut to Pakistan. You know, you know Pakistan is about to come into the news when you see certain kinds of shots. Um, so, uh, so I wanted to study more about that. I wanted to study how my own experiences and practices had been shaped by watching a lot of media. Um, and I learned that there was definitely a lot more to explore and that things could be done differently. Uh, last night, um, after the conference was done, I was sitting with um, a former classmate of mine uh, who's now based in DC, and he has now started to work for the right wing media. And I was sitting with him, and they were, so he was the only non Fulbrighter on the table, essentially. There was a Fulbright graduate from Lebanon, and there were two more from Pakistan. And there was a point, because I know this colleague of mine, I've always known what he's about, I've always known um, about his brilliant sense of humor, we have always, like the two of us have always enjoyed a great rapport between the two of us. And there was a point where I think the rest of my friends kept looking at me and him in disbelief about how the two of us could be just good friends. <laughs> And, but then there was a point where they started to bombard him with questions. So our Fulbright gang essentially started to bombard him with questions and ask him about why he does what he does and what drives him and you know what he thinks about this issue or that issue under the sun. And in that moment um, at night, I took a back seat in that conversation and I just observed. And as I observed, and as the conversation went on from being a one-hour chit-chat to a four-hour meetup, <laughs> I realized that the, the, the slight sort of resistance or animosity that, there was, that, there exist, that existed between group A and group B just dissipated in a matter of, I think, 45 to 50 minutes. And then, because every time they were about to attack him, they would look at me first because I was their friend, right? So they didn't want to mess with me too much. And I just kept focusing on my food because I knew that these full writers are going to sort it out within themselves. And they did. By the end of the fourth hour, um, everyone was good friends with each other. And everyone knew the other, si other person's side of the story. And why I wanted to share the story with you is because, I mean, not just the entire world, but obviously particularly the United States at this point is at the stage where um, where everyone has very strict and particular notions about the other, whether it's the left about the right or the right about the left. And I'm not trying to say that everything that one side or the other says is necessarily right or wrong or that it can't be condemned. But there are quite a few points where, where there is a middle ground and there needs to be more conversations. And as I was listening to this conversation, and I was listening to this awkwardness changing into warmth at, in, at, at the dinner table, I figured out that this is perhaps what Fulbright is all about. I had more faith in the three being friends with, with my former classmate because I had this confidence that they had been through the Fulbright experience. So they weren't you know, going all um, uh, aggressive about it. They, they tried to listen first, and then they had a brilliant conversation. Which is why I think, I mean, these kind of experiences also inform my work as a journalist and as a, as a documentary filmmaker in Pakistan. Um, I was, when I used to study in New York, um, I think it was the great amount of diversity in the city and the great amount of differences of opinions that exist in the city 
that enabled me to perhaps be a slightly better journalist than what I was um, when I went back to Pakistan, because it enabled me to appreciate the diversity of opinions within Pakistan, which believe you me, there are many. Um, and so it made me, it was not just New York, it was not just Fulbright, it was not just the amazing conversations that I had the privilege to have in New York or that I continue to have with people. It's a mixture of all of that that makes me believe that nuance and focusing on the grays instead of the blacks and whites is important and is it's getting more important as we fall into this space where it's this and that, either or, uh, me and them. Um, and also, I mean, apart from this, as, as someone who has now spent around seven years in Pakistan since I, since I moved back, um, and all my work is from, from Pakistan, and it's about Pakistani stories, I've also learned that in my documentary work and as I travel across Pakistan to tell stories and to find interesting people to tell stories about and to, uh, and to, uh, and to investigate into issues, um, it's not just... Uh, this experience hasn't just helped me uh, with, with, with believing in the power of the grays or the nuance, but it's also helped me find some really amazing people uh, because Pakistan's program, Pakistan's Fulbright program is, is, is the largest, I believe, right now in the, in the world. And it's always very interesting that any time I find someone doing some interesting work in some nook or corner of Pakistan. Turns out they have some connection with, with, with the Fulbright community. They've either be, they've been on some program or the other. And then there's this intense bond that gets created. Like I'm there with my camera in like 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And suddenly you're just like, oh yeah, you were also on the Fulbright. Great. Now let's tell the story together. So I feel like in a, in a place like Pakistan, which I mean, it is... I call it the land of opportunities because there are a lot of problems and every problem is an opportunity. <laughs> so I feel like in a place like Pakistan, um, it, really, it really gives you like this sense of, um, uh, uh, it gives you this, like, this intense calming belief that things are going to be fine because there are quite a few people doing the right thing or the good thing in some small or big capacity whatsoever. And because my exposure to the country happens to be just a little more because I end up traveling more because I need to make films, um, I've ended up finding even more amazing people who, um, who have been connected with the community and who continue to do amazing work. It could be work about, it could be anything from planting trees to saving human lives uh, directly. And, it really gives me pleasure um, to just see that happen. You know, it gives me pleasure. It gave me pleasure yesterday when I was sitting at that dinner table uh, in the midst of an awkward conversation that turned into a warm one. And it gives me pleasure when I'm part of this community in a country like Pakistan where um, there's a lot to unpack, there's a lot to resolve, there's a lot to fix. Some things require quick fix fix and some will take decades to solve on their own as we continue to work together. Um, it makes me really proud um, uh, to, to just be uh, associated with, with these amazing people. Um, apart from my documentary work, um, because I just happened um, to, I just happen to know like more people in different parts of the country. I also get to know more, um, more good people, but I also get to know about more problems that need to be solved. And oftentimes, I mean, if there's a problem, there's a person who's trying to fix it. And so, oftentimes, I I've tried to use my voice to do little things like you know raise funds for some organization that's uh, doing something, and I got to know that, I got to know about them, and I would have just maybe gone to see their work firsthand, and I was impressed by it, and so I would just use my social, personal social media to, to raise some noise about it so that maybe some funds could be generated or something could be donated to, you know, to, to that organization or to that obscure group of people working in the mountains. And it's always amazing. I mean, I can just assure you that any time I've put up, uh, I've put out a call for help um, for an individual or a group of people, the first group of people who 
definitely comes to help and who writes a message in my inbox is always, always undeniably a Fulbright alum from Pakistan, probably working inside the country and always trying to fix something. And I mean, just, just a week ago, um, just a week before I, I arrived here, I uh, was working on um, another small fundraiser where we had to raise a little less than um, one million rupees uh, to send uh, a particular number of students to high school in an area called Gilgit Baltistan, which is um, high up in the mountains. It's very remote. It's by the Himalayas. And um, access to, I mean, the will among people to send their kids to school or to high school is intense, is immense. But um, access to schools or access to colleges, um, when I say college, I mean high school in the American sense, access to high schools is very difficult because the areas are incredibly remote. Um, there's, um, in many patches, there's no phone communication. And even, like, and, and there's immense poverty as well. So when you go to these areas, they're beautiful, they're stunning. Uh, everyone goes there to have their touristy uh, sort of vacation around, like, in that area. But everyone comes back with like fascinating photographs and stunning visuals. Um, and everyone thinks that everything's fine over there because things are so beautiful and people are so incredibly nice and kind and hospitable. But it's when you get into you know, people's lives, you realize that you know, someone had to stop their education or their son's or daughter's education after 10th grade because there was no, there was no possibility of sending their, 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 their kid to school or have them admit at some um, hostel that could host them and then they could go to a high school. And I decided to raise um, funds for them. Uh, and I kid you not, like, Pakistan's economy really right now is in shambles. It's really bad. It's hard to get work even for people like me who ha usually have a steady stream of work. So I'm just sometimes, I mean, you know, I'm just wait waiting for an email to arrive. But in, even in this bad financial situation, it took us only three weeks to raise all, I mean, all of that amount. Um, all the kids are in high school, and if and then one last day, like when the fundraiser was over, and I was relieved that I could now go to the U.S. in peace without having to check my social media <laughs> again and again. When I did the count, I can easily say that 90% of the contributors uh, fr from just Pakistan were all Fulbright alums, and were all of them. It's almost like I can just bank on them every time to get something. <laughs> Just like to get something fixed, to get something, to get a helping hand. And, um, and that really, you know, that makes me smile every time. Uh, because, I mean, even in tougher situations, you know, people like those really know how to play their part. I mean, they've always been, you know, high achievers because, and that's because, I mean, that is how they ended up in the program. But even then, you know, I mean, uh, it takes a special someone to realize what, like, what the power of education is because, you know, if they have had an amazing opportunity um, free of cost um, at a university in the U.S. where they would have never even dreamt of if they had to self-fund their education, um, I think, like, when you're in that situation, you, you, you truly understand what, the, like, what a barrier it can be between you and your high school or you and your grad school. And I've always found these people to be the most warm and forthcoming in, in just helping. It's not always about the money. Sometimes, you know, they'll be, I mean, they'll have like a amazing designation at some huge organization and they'll be there to volunteer for some community activity. Just because they've had this experience, they know what all it takes to get things right. And they're often also the least judgmental people. Uh, so they're less cynical than the rest of Pakistan, for sure, which is always great. Um, so I felt like I, I wanted to just like as, as not just as, I'm, I mean, I'd like to say that right now, I don't want to talk too much about my documentaries. I just want to talk about what it means to sort of stay in Pakistan and just do the hustle of being in Pakistan. And I, always, I wanted to share these stories because I really felt like over the years, over the seven or eight years that I've been in Pakistan, 
have seen these trends emerge. I mean, better conversations with people who are willing to listen, um, better action-oriented uh, activities where people are willing to help. Um, any government office that I've been to, any police station that I've been to, any courthouse that I've been to, any uh, community service organization that I've been to, I've always, anywhere someone's doing something innovative uh, or something out of the blue or something slightly wacky, <laughs> it's, it's, it's mostly a Fulbrighter, um, silently <laughs> sitting in a room. Uh, and then when, and, and so, so yeah, so I really wanted to share, um, share these stories because I feel like this has had an impact on, um, on my life so far. And as I travel more, I figure out that, I mean, that these, these people um, are really doing interesting things. And also, I mean, every year that you live in, um, that you live away from the US after your Fulbright experience. You know, there, even if you love working in Pakistan, there's always reminders from the rest of the world and questions from people asking about why, why are you not moving back to the US? Like, it's almost like a default expectation from someone who has graduated and has gone back to a developing country. Like, people really wait it out. So once you're done with your two-year requirement, everyone's just looking at you like, it's like, when, when, when are they going to apply for their work visa? And, and incredibly, I mean, amazingly, like, so, like a, such a huge percentage of Pakistani alumni um, have chosen to stay back uh, in the country. And it is such an incredibly empowering, yet calming feeling at the same time that, you know, there is this bunch of people who you can always rely on, this group of people who will keep contributing, not just to Pakistan. I mean, they're contributing to in different ways, um, uh, to the world, uh, but just knowing that they're not just emotionally closer to you, but they're also physically closer to you because they're in the on the same soil, it really gives you a lot of, uh, it personally gives me a lot of strength to just go on. And I believe that that is, I can, I mean, say it with a lot of um, uh, conviction that this is not just a Pakistani thing. I mean, I can just talk about my experience, but I'm sure so many of you who, who belong to different countries and cultures uh, things are quite similar um, across the board. And, um, you know, I mean, 2020 is coming, the elections will happen in the U.S. Everyone's going to be a, like feel a little crappy at some point. But, you know, like, <laughs> a little. But, you know, like, when you feel like, when you feel like things are not going perfectly well, I would like to personally um, uh, request you to remember these kinds of stories as well. Because, uh, you know, beyond all our political alliances and, 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 and connections and bonds, uh, we essentially are human beings. And um, just the power of conversations, just the power of meeting people personally, just the power of um, putting confidence in someone else's work and helping them out really makes you go stronger forward. Um, so yeah, so so let's focus on the uh, on the nuances, and let's still try to focus on the positives. <laughs> Thank you.